Oh my god, I don't know why I'm getting so nervous to film this. I feel like, I don't know. I literally have butterflies in my stomach. I think it's because I've like had them for a month. Like now they're just like, ta-da. <laughs> Hey everyone and welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name's Charlene if you're new here and today I'm going to be doing my one month post up breast augmentation q and I've had so many questions and you've probably seen I've done a vlog um, at the time. If you haven't seen that yet, you can watch it on my channel. I've done a vlog the whole experience, answered a lot of questions that way, but there's still obviously questions afterwards and there's stuff that happens afterwards that, you know, you might know about at the time and stuff and um, kind of the recovery process, especially if people are especially interested in that. So I'm going to answer the questions now, get right into it and yeah. So as I said in my big job vlog, I went to Fee Clinic in Lithuania. I booked her amber surgery and I travelled for my breast augmentation. Um, a big question was why did you travel? A lot of people kind of were wondering, was it the price difference? What was it? My main thing, and I talked about it on my Instagram, was the surgeon. So people always say, when you meet your surgeon, you'll know. You'll be like, right, that's the one for me. So I kind of, I hadn't even heard of that yet before I went to all my augmentations. So I went, sorry, my augmentations, all my consultations. So I went to the consultations, um, so I met Demantis first. So Demantis Marinis was my surgeon in Lithuania. I met him first out of all the surgeons I met and I just loved him. He was so thorough. He really made me feel at ease. And you know, for someone who's gonna be cutting you up potentially, um, it's nice to have that kind of aura and that energy around them so I met different surgeons after Demantis and they were all Irish they were all based in Ireland um, and none of them had the same vibe and none of them I clicked with and none of them I was like right yes I'm comfortable like it's just it's such a comfort thing because at the end of the day it's surgery you want someone you trust and you immediately trust and um, I think that's a big thing because you're not going to really be able to form a relationship with them so you kind of have to have a good first impression of them and with him I really got that and I said to people a lot of people said oh it's like you know you're definitely just going for the price difference it's cheaper no like to be honest in my case and I said I've said this to loads of people that I would have preferred to get done here in Ireland I don't like flying first of all I would have way rather to you know go home to my own bed and um, I would have preferred Ireland but that is a surgeon that I chose like that that I felt the best with um and that's why I went to Lithuania I would have paid triple the price for him he was amazing like so thorough with everything and just put your at ease answered every question you had had so much time for you and when it comes to a surgery that is what you want I wish that I clicked with a surgeon as much as I clicked with him in Ireland but I just didn't you will know your gut will tell you when they say when you know you know they mean it like that's true so someone asked what made me choose that clinic and that's exactly what it was. I'd also gotten a few recommendations off girls I know that went there and had amazing experiences. People think, oh abroad, it's cheaper, it's, it must be bad. Like that's not the case. Why did you go under the muscle rather than over? So my surgeon told me that under the muscle, it's obviously a longer recovery time. It's more painful. They're cutting open your muscle and sliding the, no, is it? Yeah, so the implant goes under the muscle. It's more painful and stuff, but it's gonna make me have a more natural look. So if my implant had gone over the muscle, it would only be my skin covering covering the implant, whereas now my muscle is covering the implant, giving like a more natural effect. Whereas I don't have much skin here. Like I have very, very little. Basically, I don't have enough. So I think that, well, and he said as well, he was like, your implant's gonna be really visible. It would look quite, not fake. Yeah, it would look quite fake looking basically. Um, And you'll get a much more natural look going under the muscle. And that's what I wanted. I didn't want overly fake. I didn't want overly like stuck on <laughs> implants. Um, That's why I chose to go under the muscle. At recovery time is much longer and it is more painful. But for me, it was worth it definitely for the result that I wanted. Under the muscle was a really good decision for me, definitely. Someone said, how much was everything in total? So I paid 3,500 for the surgery and then the hotel was like 125 each for the two of us. No, 320 it was, so 175 each or something. If that, my maths is correct, I don't know, but that was so cheap, like for a week in a lovely hotel and then food and stuff like that. So I'd say I spent about like in and around 4,500 for the whole thing. So someone said, how did you persuade your family to the idea of surgery? My parents are really against it. I think like my age had a big thing to do with it. Like I'm going 23 this year. Um, I've been talking about it since I was very, very young. So I think it never came as a shock to them. Um, your family are gonna want what's best for you. You know, they'll be worried for you obviously, but my family did end up really supporting me about it. Um, and like I kind of told them on my research, I showed them all the different places I've been to, I told them why I was going here, I told my surgeon, just informing them and showing them that you have been really informed, you've been informing yourself and I literally told my mom, I was like, I've been going to consultations for a year now and she's like, no way, I didn't even know. Um, but just kind of showing them that you're serious about it, I think, and telling them how much it means to you, that's how it worked for me anyway as well. Of course they knew since I was very young that that's what I wanted um so it didn't come as a shock definitely not what are the essentials to pack for the hospital bag you take 
definitely a long cable charger so I actually didn't do this but I thought of it afterwards so the charger plug I don't know if it's like this everywhere but the charger plug was like up at the wall so every time I charged my phone I had to leave it down and not be on it so a long cable like a two meter cable and um, zip up hoodies because you can't really move your arms too well Um, what else something to keep you entertained I suppose my phone was kind of that for me Um, other than that literally just had my clothes I had kind of like little um toner to clean my face and stuff because you feel a bit like sweaty and stuff afterwards but other than that you don't really use anything I just mainly say the zip up putties is the main thing and the cable as well someone said how did you manage to still look so stunning even after I'm sick <laughs> um I god I didn't feel stunned in any way literally your head is just gone like I didn't realize I think that's another thing to take into consideration I didn't realize how much anesthetic can like mentally um not get to you but like how, how much of a brain fog I had so I brought my laptop and all thinking I was going to do college that week I have college online obviously and I just couldn't I couldn't even focus on anything like I just feel like that week is a blur and um, so bear that in mind if you're planning on I don't know getting work done or something you probably won't be able to everything just took me so long and I do something and I'd be like what am I doing again like, you'd forget but that goes away that's literally just down a sec it's normal but I just didn't take that into consideration at the time Um, how like I knew it would be physically draining but it also is very mentally draining Um, so take that into consideration maybe if it is something you are thinking about so someone asked how is the scarring for the under boob cut they had to make so the scar is literally tiny I would show you but I feel like I'd probably get blocked or something on YouTube <laughs> and the scar is literally I'd say about this size it's about three to four centimeters it is tiny it's literally like a slit like I have a little scar on my finger from when I was younger and it kind of looks like that which is kind of a little bit thicker but it's literally so small and when my boobs fully drop like they're obviously not fully dropped yet I'm only a month in when they fully drop they'll drop into the crease so my boob will actually have a proper crease so the scar won't be visible at all unless I'm like lifting my boobs up so yeah it's re it's healing really well you just have to be careful with it, obviously and clean it and be really thorough with everything um i think that's another tip i give like listen to the recommendations they're not there for no reason rest even when you feel like oh i have a little bit of energy maybe i can you know do this and do this don't do it like rest that is the main thing your body needs rest and it will stand to you because i know in the long run you think oh, i'll be fine i'm just doing this one little thing but you'll have pain later that day and it will actually stunt your progress of your recovery so just mind yourself and be careful with everything and just do the like read the instructions properly do what they say clean it properly and um, just be really thorough because it's surgery and the aftercare is as important as the surgery itself you can get really bad infections if you don't look after yourself and um, so yeah that's just a bit of advice that wasn't in any question are they hard are they natural looking are they far apart someone said so they are harder than a normal boob i don't know if you can tell i hope i don't get demonetized for touching my boob but um they are a little bit hard so they get softer as time goes on they were like rocks at the start like when i say rocks you couldn't even like squeeze them it was just like a wall basically <laughs> but they've gotten much softer now they're definitely not far apart at all i was quite worried about that because my boobs are naturally really far apart and i said to him i was like are they gonna be far apart but just bigger and he was like well they're still gonna be a little bit far apart whatever so i was kind of preparing myself okay they're gonna be a bit far apart because that's how they naturally sit because you can't actually change how your boobs sit kind of if that makes sense that's how he explained it to me but then they just were close together so I don't know if it was like the size that brought them closer but they're even better than I expected because I was kind of imagining like quite a big gap in the middle because my boobs had such a gap you probably won't see from pictures but um when I was like naked or whatever I could see there's quite a big gap and before and after pictures like the gap has changed so much like they're this is like not really a support of sports bra like it's quite um just quite light and they sit really nice and close together which I'm so happy with Um, I think they look natural-ish I wanted them to look natural-ish now they're still gonna get softer and more natural looking they still have to drop they still have to fluff even more I'm only one month post-op they change so much and I think when people like understand that sometimes it's such a progress that's why I haven't shown them before now because you know they drop they sit up here when you first get them they're not cute for a few weeks and at the time I actually loved them because I was like yay boobs but looking back I'm like oh my god they were like pecs they were literally like muscles but yeah they just changed so much like this time three months they'll be even more natural looking and softer someone said are your nipples stretched and can you feel them that's actually a good question um i can feel my nipples no problem just under my boob i can't feel on the left side so i can i can feel myself touching it with my finger obviously but 
I can't feel on the inside if that makes sense but it's only like a patch that size maybe just under my boob um, and that comes back after a few months I think it is or whatever but it's just your nerves basically and it's fine on the other side it's just use the left side and it's like this much of a numb patch um, but it's not my nipple. Oh and also that question asked are my nipples stretched? No I don't think so like my before and after pictures they look the same size yeah no they haven't stretched. Were you worried you'd regret it? Want to get mine done but scared I'll be unhappy with them. Do you know what? This actually never really crossed my mind because I was so excited and so happy about getting done. Like you'll see in my vlog, I was literally dancing into the operating room. I literally, I, I, this never crossed my mind. I remember there was a day afterwards, one of the days and I couldn't do anything and I was like kind of fed up of not being able to do anything and I was like, oh my God, why, what have I done and all? But it's such a normal, if you look it up, it's, it's all over the internet, it's such a normal feeling after surgery people some people get like um depression and stuff for a few weeks because there's a whole a lot of different factors about it that's another topic and um, but there was one day and I couldn't do anything I couldn't move and I was like felt so helpless and I smelled I couldn't shower it was just like bad and I was like oh my god what have I done what if I'm like this forever and all what if I can't do anything um but that's normal to cross your mind but I never never thought I'd regret it um beforehand or anything like that but then afterwards it was just that one day I just had one mare of a day and then afterwards I was just wasn't with my life again. Someone said, are you nervous about feeling ill in time or having other risks happening? I would love to get mine done, but scared the risks involved, e.g. being sick or leaking. Yeah, obviously that is scary and it's a risk, um, but you're told about all that in the consultations and stuff like that, about risks that can happen. Um, I always have said that if I was to get breast implant illness or something like that, um, or a rupture or a leak, I'd always have money there anyway to, to get that done or to fix it straight away. It would never be a thing where I'd leave myself stuck. That was to happen you know we'll come to that it's like anything there's risk to anything and as long as you're kind of prepared for it um you know what to look out for and stuff like that then it's okay i just think that if i if i think about the risk too much i'll freak myself out so when it comes to it if it happens i'll deal with it then it's good to know it's good to educate yourself but it's not too good to worry either because like literally they're in me now do you know i can't really do anything about it if something was to happen we'd fix it and we'll, we'll cross that bridge when we come to it so I decided on my size by all the different consultations I went to were telling me in and around basically 300cc to 350cc. So I was kind of stuck in between them. Um, and then you basically get to try them on. So you wear a sports bra like this in the room and they put in chicken fillet spacing to give you an idea. I was really torn between 315 and 335 when I got to Lithuania. Um, and I was sending pictures, I didn't know what to do. I put on my Instagram as a poll and I didn't know what to do. And everyone that had gotten boob jobs was saying, oh my God, go for the bigger one, you'll regret it and stuff like that. But I knew in my gut, I was like, but I never wanted big boobs. I just wanted boobs. I just wanted them to be there. And I thought that 315 looked nicer on me, which is what I have now. Um, in my head, I was like, no, that my gut feeling's telling me that. So I was like, I'm not gonna go with what other people are saying. I'm not just gonna pick a size because I think I might regret not picking the other side, that size. Do you know what I mean? Um, so I just think going with your gut is good for stuff like that. I know you can regret it and there's boob greed, it's called. So you'll always kind of want more. It's like lip fillers. You know, when they get swollen, you're like, oh, God, I want that swollen lip back. Um, but when your rut's telling you a size and other people are saying no, go bigger, like I was like, no, I'm gonna go with my opinion, what I think. Um, being a really indecisive person, I am sometimes doesn't help, but my gut was telling me that, and I was like, no, I'm I'm really, really happy with that, and I'm so so happy I went with 315. So someone asked, how much time off would you need from work in total? Um, if I was working at the moment, I'm off because of COVID. Um, I would say I would have been okay to go back after two weeks with no strenuous work. You can't lift anything um, over three kilograms, I think, for a good while. I don't actually know exactly how long, but I've just been being careful. I'm not going to do it for as long as I can. For like non-strenuous work, I would say two weeks, but that's me personally. So yeah, it just kind of depends on how quickly you're going to come back and stuff like that. I think over the muscle, the recovery time, like I said, is much quicker. You can probably go back sooner in two weeks. But for me personally, um, two weeks, definitely. I wouldn't have felt comfortable going back forward. And the anesthetic cylinder system, you're very tired. You're meant to be resting. I did choose glue to the bed for two weeks. Um, even when I felt like I could get up and do everything, I was like, no, I need to rest. I need to take this time and actually mind myself. Someone asked, did I get any judgment from Dano, my family or my friends? No, um, everyone's really supportive of it. Of course, people were like, you don't need it. Like, don't get it done and all. But it was such a personal decision for me. I literally done it for myself. There was no one who could have stopped me getting it done. There was no one who could turn me off the idea um, as much as they tried. But no, in the end, they were really supportive and they were great. Washing my hair and all when I couldn't wash it myself. But yeah, they were really supportive, which was nice because I know not everyone would get something like that. Um, so it was really nice. Someone asked, is there a payment plan available? I don't 
think so. I'm actually not sure. So you pay a deposit and then you pay the full amount when you're there. I don't think there's a payment plan, not for the clinic I went to. There might be for ones in Ireland, but I'm actually, I'm just not sure in general. A few people asked about, you know, flights and stuff like that and what it was like. We personally didn't get stopped going abroad, but I know some people did and some people got big, big fines. Um, We didn't get stopped. We had a letter to say basically that we're getting surgery over there and um, that if we did get stopped, hopefully we wouldn't get fined. But I know some people got fined regardless. So just obviously keep that in mind as well. Someone said, do we have a translator? No, everyone spoke perfect English over there, like better English than I can even speak. Um, and they are just the nicest people ever. Like we were actually sad leaving the clinic. It was that nice. Um, genuinely, I would be so confident in, re in recommending it. It was just the, the best place ever. Like someone asked what was different and weird because of COVID with traveling, literally just the flying part um, over there. The only thing is you have to wear the mask obviously in the clinic and stuff like that. But other than that, it was pretty like, normal because i feel like hospitals are always really clean anyway so it didn't feel really different and um, it was that you just the wearing of masks which you know we're all used to by now anyway any tips you wish someone told you or wasn't in any vlogs you watched probably like that day i had the down day the only reason like that i didn't kind of freak out was because i was actually talking to a follower who texted me and she said that don't be alarmed if i start to feel really down because people can get like kind of depressive periods after surgery kind of thinking why have i done this like your body's feeling shit your mind is a bit you know boggled from the anesthetic um, and the fact she told me that then that day that one day that I did feel shit I was like okay no this is normal it's normal to even question your decision it's completely normal to do that so um, probably that that it can be a kind of lonely time as well like I decided Ali we kind of got done together but I can imagine that if you're getting it done by yourself it would be kind of like lonely to go through um, afterwards and you know you don't feel your best you can't shower properly you can't wash your hair yourself you feel kind of helpless and um, so just keep keep that in mind because I didn't really think about that beforehand but I had a really good support system and stuff like that but I can imagine if you're doing it by yourself and um, like surgery by yourself and stuff like that it would be quite a lonely experience so yeah just bear that in mind just look after your mental health as well as your physical health Someone said, do your nipples stay the same size and colour? Yeah, mine stay the same size and the same colour. Do the implants feel hard or real? They feel, they don't feel real at the moment. Like, they really don't. But they're getting softer by the day. And I don't know if they'll ever feel like 100% like a normal boob. But they definitely will get way softer. Okay, actually, another tip that if you are going that I didn't, that one my friend actually told me, um, but it wasn't any vlogs I watched, buy another surgical bra because when you have one in the wash, you want another one to put on. Um, so buy another one while you're there. It's just handy to have and they do feel so supportive. They just feel great in them because they're so, like you just don't feel like your ribs are going to fall off. And the first time you take it off, you're like, oh my God, imagine they just fell off. But you know, but definitely I'd recommend to anyone to buy another one. So I had to wear the surgical bra for three months, he recommends. I looked up online, said six to eight weeks, but I do take it off for a few hours. You know, take it off for an hour a day or something like that, but I had it off for like two hours yesterday and stuff like that. So, you know, as long as you're good with that, I was good with it up till four weeks. And then I was like, okay, I need to take pictures. And like two hours at a time isn't a bad thing. Um, as long as you're careful with it otherwise. And at night time, I think you're meant to wear it like forever. Um, kind of like your retainer, I suppose, for your teeth. It's kind of the same thing. I just think looking after them and wearing the bra is so important because they can deform and all if you don't do the proper things afterwards so if you just look after them and do what they say you'll be okay someone said am i happy with the size i chose i've already answered this but yes 110 percent. i'm so happy i feel like they suit my body perfectly now the next size up wasn't much bigger it's like i think it's only like a teaspoon bigger with liquid or something like that or whatever is in it silicone um but I'm so glad I went with the size personally, like really, really glad. Someone said, do you feel much more confident in yourself getting them done? Yes, oh my God. Even when they were rock solid and like flat to my chest when I first got them done, I was like, oh my God, I just felt so happy. Like I took my pictures yesterday for Instagram for like my reveal picture and I cried. I literally, then I took a few and I was like, let me see, like the angle, whatever. And I just started crying and it sounds so dramatic, but it was something that I was so self-conscious of for so many years. I don't think anyone understands that unless they're in your body, how it feels. And I felt like they were always just supposed to be there and for me, it's been the biggest confidence booster ever, just for myself, literally just for myself. Um, and yeah, I'm just delighted with, with my decision and how it all went and stuff like that. I still have recovery time left, obviously. But yeah, I definitely do feel different to myself um, in the best way possible. Someone said, I know you probably didn't have any expectations, but did the results live up to it? Yes, 110%. So I actually, exactly, I didn't have any expectations. I don't know why I said yes there. I didn't have any. I was like, right, I'm just going to go in. I'm just going to get boobs. So I didn't think of what they could look like because you can't tell. It's really, really hard to imagine that in your head when they're putting the little chicken fillets in. You're like, this is going to be actual boob. But um, I am just 
all over the moon with them they're better than I could ever even have tried to imagine and um, I'm just so happy like I just think going out with no expectations is the best way to be because then you're always going to be like like happily surprised so yeah I am very very happy Someone said, do the nipples or the surrounding area feel different, like less or more sensitive? At the moment, my nipples, I'm sorry, too much information, are so sensitive. But just because the skin is stretched, my skin got quite dry as well on my boob. Um, I think that's why it is. And then, like I said, underneath is a little bit numb on this side. But um, it's just with time and it's just because of the stretch and that's why it's so sensitive about my nipples and stuff at the moment. Um, it feels so weird to talk about nipples on my YouTube channel. But anyway, um, as well, just bear in mind, because I remember when I seen all the dry skin on my boob, I was like, oh my God, what's happening? Your skin gets really dry because when it stretches, I don't know what it is, but basically it will kind of flake off. It sounds kind of disgusting, but that's what will happen. Um, so bear that in mind as well. Someone said, would you recommend this to someone who really wants it? And do you think it was worth it? For me personally, it was worth it. I don't want to recommend it to someone who really wants it because I don't want to recommend surgery necessarily. Um, but for me, it was worth it. It was something I really wanted. And and I'm really, really glad I've done it. So yeah, for me, it was definitely worth it. Someone said, did you find they got bigger and nicer as they dropped? Definitely nicer because they kind of, especially with under the muscle, they like, the muscle tries to flatten the implant. So it kind of looks like a peck. So mine looked like a, a man's muscle, your chest muscle. So they definitely got nicer. They fluffed out. They kind of look more natural now than they did. Actually, they definitely look more natural than they did but they'll only keep getting nicer and more natural as it goes on it's a process like I said they definitely didn't get bigger as they dropped though I don't think um maybe after the first few days because they were quite compacted by the muscle but in the last few weeks they haven't really got bigger they've literally just dropped and the swelling's gone down so it's if ending maybe smaller probably I feel like they were small then they got big from the swelling and then not small they were smaller got bigger from the swelling and then got small again basically um Sorry, not small, but the size they are now. But the swelling is quite a lot as well, so that will go down. So bear that in mind if you're like scared of the swelling and you're like, oh my god, they are way too big. It probably is just a swelling. It can give you a bit of a fright. Um, so that's why I think I was really happy with the size as well, because they were quite swollen. And I was like, oh my god, they're really big. Um, so then when they went down to the size, I was like, yes, perfect. Exactly what I wanted. Um, size wise, this is like exactly what I had in my head. It's just hard to imagine what it would look like on you. This isn't a question, but I know people ask. So beforehand, I was like a small B. I wore three to be but I definitely was not a B I didn't really feel the B um, and now I think I'm a big C or a small D I'm not actually too sure and um, I measure myself with tape measure but I don't know if I've done it properly and I need to go to a proper shop and get measured and um, but at the moment I have no bras apart from sports bras and my surgical bra so I need to get measured at some point to get some nice bits well yeah hopefully that answered all your questions any more questions let me know I'll answer them down below I'm gonna do a three month post up video as well with more questions and stuff and just how I'm getting on. I can't believe the month has already gone. It's flown in um, and I hope you enjoyed that video. hope it was informative. You can ask me questions as well on Instagram. I'll leave my handle down below as always and you can shoot me a DM there if you want. If you have any more questions or you can just leave them down below. As always, thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for always being so supportive and kind on my videos. It was especially appreciated on the boob job vlog because I was quite nervous posting that. Um, I was kind of nervous to be honest that I would get kind of backlash and stuff but you were all so so kind um, and I appreciate that so much I will see you next week bye